Picture this. You're at the tip top of your career with incomprehensible amounts of commercial success following the release of your first ever pure pop album. This album produces several humongous hit singles. You'd cut all your hair off. You'd move cities. You headline the highest grossing concert tour of the year making 250 million. It's a fresh start. You're named woman of the year and you win album of the year at the Grammy, which breaks a record. You're essentially on top of the world and the trajectory of your career looks promising. But what if only a few months later, everything comes crumbling down and in the end, your reputation feels irreparable? What if the world not only turns against you but beats you all the way down. Your name has been through the mud, your image is villainous, you're reduced to the word snake. Is there any coming back from this? For Taylor Swift, there is. Hey little gremlins that watch my YouTube videos, welcome back to my channel. Unless you're new, then welcome. My name is Jasmine, I'm an artist manager. I make music pop culture videos here on my channel. If you want to stick around and subscribe, I highly recommend. Please nobody comment on the fact that I have Taylor's version of Speak Now on display behind me and this is a video about reputation. I don't have reputation on vinyl, so unless somebody wants to sell it to me, we're all just gonna have to deal with it. If you guys know anything about me, you know that Reputation is my second favorite Taylor Swift album and that I love and worship her so much. I'm a humongous rep girly. If folklore didn't exist, Reputation would probably be my favorite Taylor Swift album and it is definitely, without a doubt, my favorite Taylor Swift era. And as you may know, Reputation, Taylor's version, is one of the last few albums that she has left to re-record and is highly rumored and speculated to be the one that is coming next. Because of of my love for reputation and in preparation for rep tv i wanted to make a youtube video deep diving the reputation era kind of going over everything that happened and things that define the era what makes it what it is and why it was so iconic i had a lot of fun writing this video and reliving the reputation era so hopefully you guys have a good time watching let's talk all about reputation So for me, the moment the Reputation era started was on April 1st, 2016, when Kanye West released the song Famous. The song obviously featured the lyrics, I feel like me and Taylor might still have sex, why I made that bitch famous, referencing the not so well received altercation that he had with Taylor at the 2009 VMAs when he interrupted her victory speech to claim that someone else deserved her award, implying that this moment in pop culture is what made Taylor famous, even though she was already very famous in this point in time and had several big name awards under her belt already. Scratching my head. Shortly, once backlash arose about this lyric in the song Famous, the outlet TMZ reported that Kanye actually checked with Taylor about the lyric before he did the song and it came out and everything and claimed that Taylor got the joke and she was cool with it. Taylor denied this through her ever so famous publicist Tree Payne saying, Kanye did not call for approval but to ask Taylor to release his single Famous on her Twitter account. She declined and cautioned him about releasing a song with such a strong misogynist message. Taylor was never made aware of the actual lyric, I made that bitch famous. This is when all trust in Taylor would start to dwindle as there was a little bit of a back and forth about this lyric. During the back and forth on July 16th, Kim Kardashian, who was then married to Kanye West, she stepped in to post Snapchat videos of Kanye on the phone with Taylor discussing the song Famous. This phone call had occurred before the song dropped. In this recording, Kanye does not tell Taylor that the lyric is that that bitch. This is important. This day, Kim would also take to Twitter to dub Taylor a snake in honor of National Steak Day. Also important later. From here, Taylor hate would explode in the mainstream. Like, absolutely explode. She was largely considered a quote, cold blooded snake, with the hashtag Taylor Swift is over party trending number one worldwide. Thousands of people came to all of Taylor Swift's social media pages to flood her comments and replies with snake emojis. Taylor, among all the backlash, did try to come forward and clarify that her issue with the lyrics were the misogynistic profanity used to describe her, i.e., that bitch. But nobody Nobody really cared, nobody really took it seriously. Her reputation was completely smeared and she was the subject of a massive public hate train by the public and even big media outlets. She wasn't only being talked about in the media because of the whole Kimye situation, but there was also a relationship going on at this time with Tom Hiddleston that a lot of people were accusing of being fake and for PR and calling her fame hungry in that sense. And a lot of criticism surrounding that relationship as well because she had just ended one with Calvin Harris. With all this terrible media scrutiny, Taylor kind of stepped back from the public eye a little bit. She did do a couple of performances if you go back and look in this time and she really 
released the single I Don't Want to Live Forever with Zayn as a part of the Fifty Shades of Grey soundtrack. But other than that, and after that, the silence was radio, babe. She was so far off the grid that nobody was seeing her at red carpet events anymore. She wasn't attending award shows. She certainly wasn't releasing music or posting on social media. She was barely, barely, barely seen in paparazzi photo shoots. It was reported in the news at one point in this time that she hadn't been photographed once for six weeks straight. This was just utterly crazy for someone like Taylor Swift at the time. But that's what makes a comeback a comeback, okay? She disappeared. She was not on social media, nothing. And while Taylor was gone in this time, we would later down the road learn that she was pursuing a relationship with British actor Joe Alwyn. As I'm sure you know, as I'm sure the girls are familiar with. Nobody knew about Joe Alwyn until May of 2017 when the public learns that she had been dating him since September of 2016, but wanted a chance to like be with him and get to know him away from all of the spotlight, especially considering what was going on at the time. This was controversial girls because like I said, she was dating Calvin Harris and then shortly after had a highly publicized relationship with Tom Hiddleston that people were calling PR. So she was being labeled a serial speed dater already. And then we found out about Joe. So people were just really, really coming up with any reason they could to be against her in the public. Another little piece of this puzzle, but kind of a side note, is that a year after all of this began in August of 2017, the essay trial between Taylor and a radio DJ named David Muller began. He groped Taylor at a meet and greet back in 2013 and when she reported the essay he got fired from his job. So he sued Taylor for three million dollars because he got fired from his job for this and Taylor countersued him and countersued for only a dollar which that's a whole other thing absolutely just insane. Shortly after this trial, Taylor Swift wiped her social media completely clean, shocking the public. And then the reputation era would begin to dawn when she would then post snake imagery on her social media. Yes, snakes, the very thing that was used against her in the very beginning by Kim on National Steak Day, if you remember. Mm -hmm. She posted these silent CGI clips of snakes and stirred up insane amounts of media attention. And then on August 23rd, she would announce her brand new studio album, Reputation. Ooh, you know how on Disney Channel when they go, ooh, yep, that's what I'm thinking of. The next day after Reputation was revealed, we get the announcement of the lead single, Look What You Made Me Do. Let's talk about this. The song itself immediately stood out so much in Taylor's discography. And one of the first things that was said about it is that it's so completely different for her. And overall gave us a good look at what the Reputation era would be like as a whole. It was a pretty good set up and lead into the Reputation era. It's very electro pop and dance pop. And one of the first things that was noticed by the public is that this song sounds like the very distinct one from the Mean Girl soundtrack that plays during the Halloween scene which is sort of referencing what Taylor was called even before this, but like throughout this, especially a mean girl. Katy Perry herself actually said about Taylor, watch out for the Regina George in sheep's clothing following their public feud and the release of Taylor's song, Bad Blood. So it was kind of iconic of her to use that little Mean Girls, like one of the most iconic songs from the Mean Girls. Like that's one of the only songs you can hear from the movie and be like, oh my God, Mean Girls. That Halloween scene like type beat. And so for her to put that in her, her own song, kind of take back that title of Mean Girl, just very, very cool, very iconic. One of the things that makes Reputation what it is. The song as a whole though, Look What You Made Me Do, has themes of betrayal, vengeance, realizing after everything that she can only trust some people and not others. She references being set up to be humiliated and actually directly references Kanye West by saying, don't like your tilted stage. And he was known at the time on tour to have a tilted stage. And that just made it very clear that she was not shying away from what this was about and what this new era and this new direction was going to be about. She speaks of karma and her enemies getting what they deserve. She speaks of rising from the dead and coming back with vengeance. I think it just so totally encapsulates like not the whole aura of reputation, but at least the aura of reputation at the forefront, especially visually. Kind of this, I was once beaten down, but from that I bounce back. Especially when you consider the Look What You Made Me Do music video. The music video is really, really what makes this single what it is. Probably one of her most like iconic and memorable and symbolic music videos to date. And it was super iconic at the time because it premiered during the VMAs. The VMAs, the very show that I said kicked off the Reputation era when Kanye interrupted her at it. So 
it's the details. So for one, the opening scene is a grave that literally says, here lies Taylor Swift's reputation. And she begins this entire era by crawling out from a grave. So we have zombie out of the woods Taylor burying Met Gala Taylor, which is likely signifying the end of her good girl reputation. She also references her brief online feud with her ex Calvin Harris by putting her alias on the grave next to the one that she climbed out of. Taylor wrote Calvin Harris's This Is What You Came For under the alias Niels Soberg, and that is what's on the tombstone. See what I mean? Like the details are absolutely insane. That's why people call this like such an iconic comeback. Okay, okay, okay. We also see Taylor in this music video in a bathtub full of jewels, which could be an obvious nod to her public image of riches and pearls, etc., etc. especially when you consider the single dollar in the bathtub likely referencing the dollar that she countersued Muller for. In this music video, she also sits on a throne of snakes and sips tea, still following the snake name calling thing. But even more interesting, the columns in this scene read et tu brute. Um, this is referencing Julius Caesar, meaning even you Brutus, which is what's spoken in the scene, Julius Caesar, when Caesar is stabbed by his own friend. Brutus. This is symbolizing betrayal, fake friends, her own friends being dragged, etc. We also see a very glamorous Taylor get into a car crash holding a Grammy. We see her trapped in a giant cage with a snake thigh tattoo. The cage is also interestingly being guarded by bodyguards. And these are all just very like telling metaphors and imagery for her whole life and reputation. And there's this scene where Taylor is robbing a bank with the name of Streamco. Like the bank's name is Streamco, which is likely nodding to people calling her greedy for taking her music off of streaming platforms until artists were compensated fairly. But I think the most important scene in this music video comes though when Reputation Taylor is standing on a pile of old versions of herself trying to claw their way up to her. You can see You Belong With Me Taylor in the Junior Jewel shirt, Speak Now Taylor with a 13 on her hand, Red Taylor in the Ringleader jacket, Shake It Off Taylor. And there's a scene with them all at the end where they're referencing things that have happened and things that have Taylor has been made fun of for and like the things that the media says about her just like one big mocking of her image and narrative you guys stop making that surprise face it's so annoying yeah you can't possibly be that surprised all the time what's with that bitch don't call me that and overall, even though I didn't even cover everything about this music video, this is one of the most like detailed and shady music videos I've ever seen. An absolutely just insane way to make a comeback when your reputation was going down the drain. First of all, girls, let's talk about the cover of Reputation. You guys know I'm obsessive and insane and crazy wacko about album covers. So Reputation album cover. I will say I think this album cover is, was like very different for Taylor at the time in her career. Like it was the first time she had a black and white cover. She's pretty much expressionless in this cover, wearing a choker, her hair is slicked back, you know, just like very different vibe in the overall shoot even, just overall, but especially in the way that this cover was designed. Like her name is printed all over it in a typeface that resembles newspaper, which reads as mockery of her media scrutiny. And this was actually considered one of the worst album covers of 2017 by the public and even Billboard themselves. But I have have a deep appreciation for it actually. Could it have been executed a little better? Yes, but I love the concept behind it so much. That's the thing. If you're gonna make a comeback album after being shot to the ground by the public and the album has the theme reputation, having that media magazine theme in black and white on the cover is just genius to me. Like I love that. And I've seen lots of mock-ups of different versions of this cover like this, like this, like this. And seeing these mock-ups and like different ways to play with reputation makes me really, really eager and like curious about the Taylor's version one. Follow me on Twitter to see my immediate reaction and immediate meltdown to the Taylor's version cover because that's probably where I will go when that happens. Onto the actual album itself though, we're working with 15 tracks with only two features, which are both on a song called Endgame. Sonically, Reputation is definitely an electro pop album at its core, but with elements of dance pop and even R&B and like trap, which again, insanely different for Taylor at the time. A very production heavy album and very maximalist. And this was done by the main producers, Jack Antonoff and Max Martin, but there was others. Don't crucify me, I know there was others, I'm just saying. But yeah, there's lots of synthesizers on this album, bass drops, trap percussions, just much like heavier and louder and also darker than its pop predecessor, 1989. I will say there is a second half of this album that's less aggressive and more soft with songs like Dress, Getaway Car, Gorgeous, especially New Year's Day, which is the best song on that album, Argue With The Wall, 
argue with your mother, but I truly don't think Taylor has any other albums quite like Reputation, and she didn't especially before it came out. So like imagine how jarring this sound was to the public when this came out after like not only her first couple albums, but then Radio Silence and then this, like just so crazy. I think it was an incredible switch up and a new overall thing for her altogether. So it works. Lyrically and thematically, I think Rep is kind of split between two themes, kind of like I was saying about its sound. There's like two kind of different vibes going on here. On one hand, we have the theme of vengeance and drama, poking fun at her media narrative, very dark and merciless. She sings of a bad image, crime slash a partner in crime, manipulated people, being perceived as crazy, knowing how people talk about her, betrayal, revenge. And these are the themes and lyrics that really capture like I said earlier, the aura of reputation to the public or at the forefront, like what reputation looks like and what it seems it would be about. But there is a whole other side of reputation that explores so much like hopeful romance, friendship, finding something special underneath all the darkness, like a love album to its core. It's crazy. I feel like it's something people don't take away enough from this project, how she portrays all of this darkness, but then also in the same project lets her guard down and admits that's not her which transitions us beautifully into the lover era. There's love songs and deep attraction and playfulness scattered on this album like that I don't think can be ignored. And I think the song Delicate does a really good job of capturing both energies in rep and kind of pulling them together. Like honestly, one of the best songs that I've ever heard. Every time the intro to Delicate plays like on shuffle in the car or something, it feels like my heart stops for a second. Like first few seconds. Listen for the best. Absolutely just insane song insane song just so oh and closing with new year's day is also like batshit insane in the best way possible i think there's a very specific kind of intimacy that she wrote into new year's day like the intimacy of waking up and cleaning up after your new year's party and there's something a little bit more intimate in that than like the actual new year's kiss itself like we're cleaning up the place after our party just so beautifully done so much love and warmth in this album that i just don't want people to ignore i also feel like people struggle to take reputation super seriously just based on what i've seen and they struggle to see it as one of her stronger projects but lyrically it is still such a masterpiece like it is making something with that many layers as many as reputation has was not easy and she deserves her kudos for that because it's just such a complex project with so many layers like I said. I think rep is definitely one of the most put together eras when it comes to visual. I think it's really easy to spot the rep aesthetic and recreate it. It's very cohesive and neat. We've got the black and gold kind of taking over. The snake of course, wine slash whiskey, nighttime. There's elements of green, fireworks, newspapers, diamonds slash chains, glitter on the floor. Anything following like a dark and sensual and almost malicious energy paparazzi you know reputation your image act, act, act. so easy to kind of pull these things from her songs and from the look overall and from tour and all of that put them together and you have a beautiful just reputation image and i think taylor's personal style is also a really big part of eras so in the rep era we saw a lot of camo bomber jackets distressed denim thigh high boots body suits dark lipstick bangs with wavy hair that was like the style and i think all of these things combined with rep style of music and the theme and the content all kind of like pulled together so nicely and created a really rock solid era which of course made for quite the comeback after everything went down performance wise i will say at the time when reputation was going out it was largely criticized and being accused by many of being taylor's worst album like i will not gloss over that and pretend that the rep era was like crystal clear and perfect because girl you know it wasn't i think the fans really loved it though and a lot of people did really love it even still it sold two million copies in its first week of release it opened at number one on the billboard 200 it was the best-selling album of 2017 in the u.s it went triple platinum it ended up being nominated for best pop vocal album at the grammys and regardless of all the criticism it did get it got a 71 on metacritic which is great for an album album maybe arguably a little lower for taylor but still an amazing score to pull out i was reading critic reviews of reputation and it was highly praised for its theming and storytelling the switch and sound point in the video the power went out so all of my lights went off and i was sitting without air conditioner for a while and then when it came back on the angle changes completely and i look crazy 
So just a heads up. And though Taylor's ability to sell out stadiums was questioned at this time, she did and she embarked on a Reputation Stadium tour with 53 shows and it made her $345.7 million. As you can see, this tour did not flop. <laughs> It was also later released as a Netflix concert film, which is amazing and iconic and I love to watch. And I feel like a lot of people who kind of doubted her in this time were a little bit sad after that came out and they saw how amazing the production was because it really was amazing. It included a giant snake, like a giant snake, just insane production with very rep-esque outfits as well. I think the people who ride so hard for rep are just so in love with it and so inspired by it, me being one of those people. The whole concept of being knocked down and using it to make yourself stronger and come back and actually succeed, like being able to mix revenge fantasy and darkness with real feelings and vulnerability. There's just nothing else like the rep era and it's not something that you could easily just do twice, you know what I mean? I feel like people nowadays forget or don't know that Taylor went through something actually really dark and her silence through it all was not easy for fans and it was a hard time for them too. At that time, it felt possible that the Taylor Swift hype would just be dead for good. It really did. So for Rep to come and just turn the tide completely and for her to break barriers and become bigger and bigger and bigger and just completely bounce back is absolutely insane. And I think the way that Rep rolled out made it work perfectly because she came back with this dark snake imagery and a single as blatant as look what you made me do. It pulled in the public and critics and it got them to want to hear what she had to say. And then she was able to like intertwine her real feelings and kind of talk about her relationship to also appeal to the fans and like be able to make what she is passionate about. So I think Rep is really special for what it is and I think a lot of people are going to fall in love with it after Taylor's version is released. So hopefully it'll really, really get its flowers because I feel like it didn't as much as it deserved to back when it came out. Anyway, that was my little revisiting, retelling of Taylor Swift's reputation era. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Let me know in the comments your favorite part of the reputation era, your favorite songs on reputation, your feelings on reputation in general. Maybe you're a reputation hater. I don't know. But let me know. And while you're down there, fill out my description I have for you where you can request video topics from me. Follow me on all my social medias and subscribe if you haven't already. I'm very, 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 very excited for Rep Taylor's version. So the second you see me sitting here to react to it, it, just be prepared. Just be ready because that's going to be an insane day. I hope you're all doing absolutely amazing, drinking all the water, thriving, and I will see you in my next project. Mm -hmm.